Hello there, I'm Sir Fancy and welcome in this tutorial where I will show you how to create a game with a simple plane that you fly through circles etc etc. Well you can see it already on the screen and I'm not gonna waste your time with any stupid jokes as I usually do so let's get to it. Alright let's create a new project, I will be using 4.25.4 version of Unreal Engine but you can use whatever you want so let's launch it. Alright we will be making a game and let's use flying template right here next. And we will leave it as blueprints, switch it to mobile or tablet and let's decrease quality just to be sure to scale above 3D 2D. We don't need starter content and you know what, well let's actually start, I uh, use starter content. We will use mobile starter content but it can be quite helpful if you are going to create uh, different environments etc etc it can help you. In that case you are probably better off importing some free assets from Unreal Engine Marketplace but let's use starter content for now and disable it, ray tracing of course. So let's call it mobile plane game and create the project. Oh, while my project is starting I will show you at least uh, those free assets that you can use here on Marketplace. Oh come on mate. Uh, here are marketplace, if Unreal won't quit my uh, epic launcher again, you can uh, simply click here and either go to epic games content or permanently free collection, basically anything here and find here anything for Android or basically for VR, if it will work for VR it probably will work for mobiles and you can find some assets right here, you can change tags here, uh, switch it to environments and you will, I'm pretty sure that you will find here a lot of really cool stuff that you can use to build something. For example, these modular building sets actually look really good. You are you can probably create the whole cities and fly around them. And they don't look that heavy, so you can so you can use them for your flying game. But now our project is prepared. So if I click on play, you can see that I have here this flying thing, which is cool. And we will change pretty much everything about it. Well, first of all, let's try to see mobile preview. So if you click on this arrow and right here on the mobile preview, it will load in a bit and you will see how your game will sort of look on your phone. It's also a pretty good idea to have your phone here with you and test it at the same time as you are making it. But you can see we can use left joystick, right joystick doesn't do anything, so we will get rid of it. And of course change that model because this one looks kind of lame and let's be real, it's kind of lame to use original assets. That's that's not good, we are not gonna do that. So I'm going to import this airplane with uh, some textures and I have downloaded it here from Sketchfab. I didn't make it, so yeah, these are credits for the original creator and I will leave you with link in the description and I will also leave you a link for this model because I had to edit it a little bit to make it work. So let's create here a new folder. Let's call it just assets, even though this is the only assets that we are going to use, doesn't matter. And let's put that guy right here. And you probably don't even need these textures, it should be applied to FBX file. And make sure that if you click on this, you don't have enabled combined meshes, we need to have them separated. So import all. And yeah, as you can see, we have airplane by itself, cool. And then we have airplane proper, or how the hell do you read it? Proper, hopefully proper. Uh, separately because we want it to rotate. So now let's open our plane BP, so flying pawn, edit. And what I will want to do is firstly change that mesh. So let's find this mesh and we will need to find our airplane, airplane, right? Airplane underscore theme airplane. And you can see that it's rotated in the wrong way, etc. A lot of other stupid stuff. So what I will do here is uh, normally I would just change this rotation, but I can't do it because I have set it as main uh, scene component or however you would call it. So let's add here scene component right here, put it on top. Oh, come on. And again, before actually rotating it, let's take our spring arm and our camera and move it to our scene component. Because right now I can rotate the plane without rotating camera, which is exactly what we want. And now I can again take our spring arm and put it under plane mesh. And camera under it, of course. We will of course now need to change it a little bit. Well, let's put it closer, or something like that. That should be fine. All right, let's try to play the game, how it looks like. And for now I will use regular viewport because it's faster. And it looks fairly well, but what I will do for sure is again find our plane, edit flying pawn. As much as you can use your spring arm and don't move your camera. Let's take its rotation and rotate it down, something like that. And now you can 
rotate camera. Right click on play. And that's better I would say. Maybe I kind of like that look from above so let's move it a bit more up. So let's uh, disable this one and slightly move it up. Something like that. Click on play and it's a bit better I would say. So I will leave it like that. You can of course find your perfect position. And you can see that we don't have here our proper. That's because it's a separate mesh. So let's add here another static mesh. Add component static mesh. Oh, well, let's actually name it propeller and put it under plane mesh and let's set it to of course our propeller and let's try to move it somewhere where we will be able to see it right now you can see it's somewhere here for a really weird reason that i don't really understand let's click on these arrows and we'll reset it to its default position and make sure that it's under plane mesh and not under spring arm all right again let's disable this lock and now if we rotate it, you can see that it looks like it's rotating, but of course right now it won't be rotating just like that. So let's go into our event graph and firstly let's delete few stuff. We don't need this thing, it's completely useless. Uh, we probably don't even need this thing and let's leave our these two. These are for setting rotation and this is, this is for moving forward. And let's look here in our event tick put here sequence so take this pin sequence and let's move it up here and we will simply take our proper and add its rotation so add uh, let's do add world rotation uh, split structure pin again let's try y on let's tr let's try two on y axis and again connect it and it's rotating on along wrong axis so because we are using word rotation now we need to use i believe it's it will be x let's try that and it's starting to look fine look at that maybe i would speed it up let's try 10. and look at that now it's looking like we are actually doing something and it's pretty it's usually a good idea to comment everything especially if we have it here from unreal so let's select all that click c and let's put here rotating propeller so now let's try to make it a bit more interesting if we scroll down if we click on spring arm and scroll here we can enable camera lock and that's exactly what we will do then also let's enable draw debug lock market so we can actually see what we are doing because right now if you click on play, look at that yellow thing under your plane, it will tell you basically how much behind is your camera behind your plane. And if you stop uh, moving, it will again make everything even. And if you read the instructions here, which I should have done on the start, well, not gonna lie, you need to set that value as low as possible. Basically, the lower the number will be, the bigger will be the lag. So let's try to set it to 2 and 2 and see what it does. Click on play and now you can properly see what it does. It's not a bad idea to have it like that actually, I kinda like it. Because what you can do now is let's increase it to about 4 by 4 And if you want you can set here max distance for example 10. So now it won't be that far. And you can see that's way too much. So let's try max distance 100. Or maybe four is too much. Yeah, something like that. Look at that. It's starting to look like proper plane. And you know what? Let's, let's try 150. And if we scroll up here, we can see the target time length, which is how far camera is on the start. So what we'll do is to decrease it to about 60. And click on play. And you can see that we will have that nice lag effect and still have airplane fairly close all right that's looking good you can do some pretty impressive stuff with camera lag so i will definitely recommend you to play with that and as you would expect everything works just fine i would probably increase it a little bit not gonna do it now you can you can play with it yourself and find what you need and we have here three problems look at that we have two joysticks and one of them does literally nothing so let's get rid of it and change these whole settings to something we need 
So to do that, we actually need to go to project setting. So let's find here project setting and find here, I believe touch should do it. Yeah, we have here default touch interface. And what you can do is to again, switch it to left virtual joystick only. And this one will have only left joystick. But if you want, you can of course edit it and yeah, set your own joystick. I will do it with widgets, but if you want, you can set it here as well. To see all that, you probably need to set uh, view options and enable here engine and plugin content. I think that engine content will be enough. And now if you, find it you can see here we have here two different joysticks first one the default one has two different controls left one and right one of course and if you click on left virtual joystick which is the one we had just selected you can see that it's only zero which means only one element of this control setting so now we have set it here if you click on play it should be on the left one and looks pretty decent so now what I want to do is to add here some control element on the right side that will let me increase or decrease speed. So let's click on this icon and go back into content and let's go into flying BP blueprints and right click here. We will create user interface and it will be widget blueprint. Let's call it plane underscore a hat. Open it and to do what we will do here in our designer let's add here a slider and i won't really change its visual you can do it yourself set it whatever you want uh, what i will do is to set here orientation to vertical because i want to have it oh sorry right here on the right side and if you want you can go here into appearance uh, slider bar color set to red or uh, let's do blue for some weird reason that I myself don't understand and handle set to right uh, but of course if you want you can add here different images and make it here in style looking actually good and not just something like that well right now let's just increase bar thickness that should work to do let's do like 10 and let's also rename it right here on the upper corner we have details and let's call it slider underscore speed and of course don't forget that you need to change anchor point right now it's left up here i want to click on anchors and switch it to right all right so now let's go back into flying pawn and we should have here event begin play and in case we don't let's create it event begin play uh, put it up here and let's create it so create widget that widget will be of course our plane hat and of course now we need to add it to viewport but before we do that i need to promote it to variable because i will need to reference it later so let's promote it to variable uh, and uh, right here left and left here you can see i have here new variable so let's rename it to plane hat underscore reference or just ref and of course you need to add it to viewport so add to viewport so now if you click on play, we should see our new slider once the game will start. It's always kind of pain when mobile game starts. It takes so long. And you can see if it right here, I can change it, increase it, decrease it, do do do. Kind of boring with mouse, but if you have two fingers, it's much more fun. Jeez, that was a terrible joke. I just realized what how you can take it. Don't don't take it in that way. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's quit this thing and actually do something with that slider. This is definitely not rated for YouTube. Never mind. Let's take plain hard reference. And what we will do with it is influence our speed. Right now, if you look in our apply forward speed, let me just quickly explain what it will do. Uh, after event tick, it will add locational offset, which means it will push it in some direction. And the direction will be chosen from this vector. From And as you can see, Y and Z vector in this case are zero. But X vector is set by our delta seconds and it will take the delta seconds multiplied with your current forward speed, which is variable created here, right now set to 500 make that x vector from it and move in the direction then it will use of course rotation for x y and z which is set right here basically when you move up it will take turn speed and uh, current yaw speed which are again variables so you can change them and find directions or in this case more of rotations where it should move on uh, I won't really change it because it works very well, but if you want to kind of take it apart, break it, which is basically the best way to learn it and learn how it all works, you have here everything described, so I would encourage you to do that. But right here, 
let's we can ignore this part this is just for rotation we will work with this current forward speed and we'll change it a little bit so what we will do here is move our current forward speed and add here another multiply so let's take current forward speed and multiply it float times float and we will take our plane hat reference get plane hat reference and right here remember and remember that we in that hat have set our slider speed so let's take slider speed and take its progress that's basically how far it is so let's take the hat reference and we will need slider get slider speed and its progress so if you just put here progress it should be it and it's actually not progress it's value sorry my bad so let's put here value and you need to you don't want to set value you want to get value and let's connect it right here and before we will do anything else we need to of course change it here in our slider because right now the value is between 0 and 1 which is a problem because right now if we would do it it starts on value 0 which means that it will render this one to 0 and then this one to 0 and this one would cause our plane to crash and we don't want to do that let's click on our slider and switch it to minimum value of 1 and maximum value to 10 so now it will be between 1 and 10 based on where is this slider all right and now let's take this and connect it back where it was and let's see how it works and you can see that it's not moving at all for some weird reason it should actually and if i increase it yeah it will speed up i am afraid that i have made exactly the mistake i warned you about i let the plane crash yeah you can see I, you can see that a basic value i've said it is one, zero and i need to have basic value as one i'm sorry my bad our plane basically crashed because of that it just didn't but it let's pretend that it crashed so now it will be on its basic speed and if i put that slider up you can see that it's moving faster much faster actually so let's decrease that speed and it will slow down a bit if you want you can set that maximum distance in our luck so it will be much more visible when it will speed up like that but that's pretty simple to do so i will leave that to you let's just speed it up and you can see that it works just fine cool so now let's also make sure that we have some fuel and our plane can actually crash so we will need to go back to plane hut and create here progress bar let's put it right here and scale it up somewhere here on top change anchor point on top and by default let's set percent to one if you decrease it it should go down which is cool let's change the color to something green because i like green there is no real reason for that now back into our flying pawn and we will use something very similar as we did here let's take our plane hat reference and go on the end of this event tick or you can create new sequence here doesn't really matter and of course i forgot again we need to rename it so this progress bar let's call it fuel progress and what we will do is to take uh, fuel progress get fuel progress and they will need to get a percent and now of course we need to set percent because what we will do right now it's set to one so what we will do is to take our pine hat reference again and take from it once more our value for speed so let's put it just speed get slider speed get its value so get value and remember it's between 1 and 10 and our percentage is only between 0 and 1 so what i will do is to divide it so float divided by float and set it to 100 and if you are not sure about those numbers and i will actually do it now just to demonstrate it let's put here firstly print print string and connect it right here just to that value from our slider speed so click on play and you can see it's on one and our fuel is on one as well so i of course can't uh, subtract uh, that one only from that fuel especially on event kick so what i will have to do is as i said divided by 100 which you already know but you know i, I like to demonstrate it visually like this so now let's take that percent set it to minus and we'll take minus float minus oh float minus flyness <laughs> sorry float minus float and set that percentage right here and see what it does 
why I am doing it like this is also because the higher I will set this value, which means this slider, the more it will take our fuel. And maybe I will have to divide it by 1000, we will see. Because it should take about 60 per second, which means, yeah, it will probably go too fast. I will have to uh, divide it by 1000, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, that was very fast. Really, really very fast. So, again, flying pawn. Now let's try to divide it by thousand and in that case i'm afraid i will have to go more like ten thousand and uh, yep way too fast all right let's times ten you know what let's let's try hundred thousand just put a bunch of zeros so it will do the trick and now it's slowly taking that fuel so now what you can do of course is to increase that speed and it will if you would put it on top it will take uh, it will be ten times faster so maybe I would again add more, one more here, zero, just to see how it does. Yeah, it works pretty well. Another thing, let's add here some check. So what I will do here is to put here branch. That will check if this percent, let's just take it, uh, you know what, let's take it from, no, 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 we have to take it again, sorry, my bad. Uh, let's take it here, we need to take our plate hat reference and percent and make sure that it's smaller than zero uh, that's bigger than zero if it's if it is bigger than zero then it won't do anything but if it is not let's set here and game so uh let's just print it for now print and game and i will probably leave it just with that print so you can add here whatever end of the game you want do, 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 do. and we have end game game ended cool you will probably i want to add there some screen or anything well, i will just put here print again print string game ended short delay oh come on short delay 0.2 seconds and then let's get current level name that's a super simple way to restart it get current level name and open level just connect it here and uh, let's of course comment it all so c and let's put here check fuel and reset level and right here this may be a bit confusing so let's also rename it and c and it is set fuel based on speed cool move that all up and you can collapse it of course to macro or to function whatever you want this should work with everything probably not a bad idea to collapse it to function actually so now let's also add here something we can do so some uh, scoring system and if we look into mobile starter content there surely is something i can use as a ring what is that torus yeah that's exactly what i was looking for so let's take the torus and we'll turn it into blueprint uh, so content flying bp blueprints and let's create it here uh, blueprint class actor let's call it ring underscore bp open that guy and add here, add here that torus so static mesh call it a ring and as our static mesh let's say torus shape torus it's cool set scale of the torus to 15 times 15 and this is actually 17 times 17 i have lock lock so it should work and uh let's change material to something uh, gold we have here gold of course and let's let it rotate so i'm in graph you want to add local rotation on our link of course and it should be z and let's try five or maybe seven we have, i have it already here so click on play and look at that it's rotating and your airplane can fly through that. It will be much more fun if you will actually drive it. Yeah, or fly it, fly it, probably fly it. Oh, our rotation, oh, our camera is lagging. What can we do about that? If you click on your camera, you should have here, or is it in spring arm? Yeah, probably it is. there should be two collision tests. So let's try to disable that. Or you can uh, create smaller probe sites, but it should be fine. Do, do, do. Yeah, that fixed it. So back to our ring BP, and we need to put here some collision. So let's 
So to do, let's do box collision, scale it up. So it covers the whole inside of that thing. And once someone will interact with that collision, oh, it's, you, can actually, you can't actually see it, that's cool. You don't expect that thing. Uh, let's put it under a ring, just to be sure. So it rotates with the ring. And on collision, scroll down, on component back in overlap. Cast to... Oh, how is our call? Uh, how is our pawn of call? It's flying pawn, so... Cast to flying pawn. A director. And what we will want to do here is... Is actually cast to... Our plane had reference, but we firstly need to create that number in there. So flying BP blueprints, plane be hat. And let's add here another number. Uh, text. And do 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 put it here. Anchor point up. Let's make it bigger, bigger, so font size 35. And I have here actually some points. How is that possible? Not sure, but let's use that. Probably something from Epic Template. And now you should here have a content text. Let's bind it, create binding. And that value should be promoted to variable. Let's set it to score. And here back in the ring BP, we will take, first of all, we need to take our plane hat reference. So get plane hat reference. And from that, we need to take our score. And we also need to set score. So set score. Oh, ho, ho, ho. no, I can't. Sorry, that was my mistake. Uh, compile plane and let's disconnect it. Convert it to float. Change variable type. It's cool. It will give you some error, but it can ignore that. And uh, connect it right here. Uh, that was that was a materish mistake. I shouldn't have done that. I'm so sorry, mate. So now back here in ring BP. I have here a score to get score. We also need to set score, so set score. And now what you can simply do is to take score, set it to plus plus, which is increment float. It will always add one. And set it as our new score. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo. So now if you click on play, you have here number one. And if I will fly through that, it will switch it to number two because I'm an idiot. And that's simply because I'm an idiot, as I said. <laughs> uh, that's because I what I'm doing is, is basically taking an increment and then setting it again. So the only thing you need to do is do this plus 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 plus. And for some reason it still adds two. What can it be? It's overlapping something and I'm not sure what. It's overlapping it two times for some weird reason that I actually don't understand. So just to quickly fix it, better than trying to understand it, right? Don't do that at home, guys. Don't do that. <laughs> Let's put here do once note that will make sure that you do it only once. Add here rotation, that's cool. So now I put here three of them just to check it. Let's put here another one. All right, seems like it works fine. Let's try to fly through that. Do -do -do. Ah! Come on, mate. Yep. It's actually harder than it looks like. But you, you will see yourself. <laughs> All right. You probably already see. Because if you are at this part of the tutorial, we are doing it as well. I hope so, at least. Never just watch tutorial. It's kind of useless for you to learn anything. It's always better to uh, do the same stuff as you do, uh, as you see in the tutorial. Increase the speed. Everything works. I would say that's about it. All right, I would say that's pretty much about it for this tutorial. I will now deploy it and launch it on my phone to see uh, to check if everything is all right. And then I would say that's it. That's pretty much it. All right, that should be really it. Somewhere here on the screen, you can see how it looks on my phone. And hey, that's it. I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions or tips for other videos like that, or just games that you would like to see made a tutorial of on, whatever, put that down in the description, press the like button, and that's about it. Sort of fancy out.